Make sure my desktop is appropriate and nothing in there. Okay, desktop time. Hey, look at that picture. Fabulous. Um, okay, right, I'm not paying attention to the chat at the moment particularly, folks. I've got too many things open at once. Um, okay, right, so. Digital elevation model comes in something called an HGT file, a height file. And it's basically just an area of... Um, it describes the landscape. Um, so the first thing you want to do is find a source of data. There's different types. There's DEM, there's SRTM, there's ASTA GDEM, there's all sorts of different things. And then they're all at different resolutions. So you've got SRTM1, SRTM3, SRTM15. And then you're going to hear other references to things like one arc second or 90 minutes or 30 minutes or... It, it's a bit um, uh, confusing. Uh, yes, the camera is switched off OMG trains for a good reason. You don't need to see me while we're looking at a tutorial. It just gets in the way. So, um, what I'm going to suggest is uh, I've found a website which has global data, which is good quality data, and it is what's called 3 arc second, which is 90 meter resolution. That means that there is a point every 90 meters all over the world with height with a height point on it um, that's actually not especially high resolution really it's, it seems pretty good but it's actually by the time when you actually get down to it it's not particularly high resolution uh, if you're doing a route in UK train sim you will find that there are there's a bunch of files in there and I think that's one arc second data so that's 30 minutes um, so um, Nine, nine minutes, meters, meters. Uh, so thirty meters, which is three times better, of course. Um, it's um, so yeah. If you're doing a route in UK, in the UK, you can use the UK train sim data, um, and I, there are other sources you can get for around. Um, around the world um, which will do that the reason I've chosen viewfinder panoramas is because it's good it's easy to access and it covers the entire planet so whatever I say here applies equally to everybody whereas if I was to say use the UK train sim data that's great but it wouldn't help someone who wants to make an American route or a Swiss route or a Dutch route for example so um, I'm going to use the viewfinder data. It's good. I recommend you give it a shot. Um, I've spoken to the uh, owner of the data of the website, um, Jonathan DeFranti, and uh, he is more than happy for everyone to um, to use the data in train simulator routes as long as it's given appropriate credit. So it's a good source of data. Now, um, let me just go to the website. Right, this is Viewfinder Panoramas. It's a, you know, it's a plain website, but it does the job quite nicely. What you want to go to is this section here that says Digital Elevation Models. And then up here you could say the whole world is now available at 3 and arc, 15 arc second resolution. So this one, and then the two quotes, is for one arc second data, but that's only for a very limited area of the world. The author, uh, Jonathan, is expanding the data so that you'll find more and more of the world gets covered with one arc second data, and that's great. You can use it. Um, there is um, Asta GDEM, which is generally, I think, one arc second, um, but it's got more errors in it, I think, um, and it's got um, some other... Um, so if you imagine that you've got trees and things like that, apparently... Um, Asta GDEM more covers the top of the canopy, whereas um, the SRTM stuff covers the ground. Makes a very subtle difference, but it's um, and it's quite confusing. So this seems like a reasonable sort of set of data to use. And right, so if I go to um, this um, three arc second, we get this rather splendid map of the, of the world. Now each of these little squares is is the is set of terrain data. So um, if I was to click on say this square here, we'd get data for wherever this is in the world, um, and that it would cover that square, and you get all the height data for it. Um, if you so this is the UK, and you can see the entire UK is in about six, maybe seven. Um, 
of these squares so you can download those squares so if you just click on the square so this is n30 if I click that and click save file that's it it's downloaded that file there's not a lot to it to be honest um, if I so you click the ones that you want so if you're building a route over on California here you click some of these ones and get them down if you're doing Massachusetts you click some of these Florida down here you know, um, Chicago probably around there somewhere so you can download all of these um, um, these bits of the uh, of the terrain and uh, what you get is a zip file so um, and there's not a lot to that so let me just go to my downloads folder um, <clears throat> and I'm just making sure that this is clean and not going to be too embarrassing there we go right so in the downloads folder um, here we've got n30.zip that was what we just downloaded so if I go into it what you get is all of these .hgt files alright and what we're going to do is put them into a particular location now this is a, one of those here's one that I did earlier so I downloaded the four or five of these zip files from this website just in exactly the same way and I put them into um, Railworks so let me show you how you put them into Railworks so in the Railworks folder which is under Steam, Steam Apps, Common Railworks um, if you find the, uh, the, the main folder you need to create a folder called DEM for Digital Elevation Model could I turn off the ads banner yeah, you mean the thing at the top? That one, okay. Um, apologies. So yes, you've got the uh, Steam Steam Apps Common Railworks here. Um, and then if we go to the uh, DEM, so you need to make this folder. It won't already exist. So you go into that. You need to make another folder called SRTM. <coughs> so if you go into SRTM, and here is all of those HGT files. Yep. So all you need to do is place all of the HGT files covering the area you want in that folder and then the bit we do in the game just magically works because it looks for the bits in here, tries to find them and if it can it uses them. So make sure you've got the right bits. That's all we need to do outside of the game. Once the files are in the right place, that's it. So you go to viewfinderpanoramas.org um, and uh, find the links having gone to the uh, the three arc second data there is 15 arc second data but if you look at the size of the squares as you can see that's incredibly low resolution <laughs> and for what you're trying to do with train simulator it's definitely not adequate the three arc second is basically adequate um, although obviously if you can get one arc second data then use that it does need to be in the HGT format if the data you're finding is not in the HGT format then there are there are tools such as something called 3DEM which you have to buy but that will convert between numerous different um, formats uh, of data but I've again I've chosen this site because it downloads the data in the right format it's easy to access there's other ones the USGS the US Geological Survey have a thing called Earth Explorer um, and you can get um, all sorts of data at all sorts of resolutions from that website um, uh, but it's it's a bit tricky to use and you need logins and it gets just confusing so that's why I've gone with this because it's easy uh, yes I'm going to put links in the description for installing okay so we've downloaded we've downloaded data we put there I hope everyone can understand exactly how you download the data that's why I picked this website because it's easy um, like I said also if you do use data from this in your route make sure you give credit to if you find the panoramas in your um, in your readme's and uh, route info and all the other documentation so that uh, everybody who use, uh, uses or root can see where you got your data from right uh, now we need the game up so one moment while I fire the game up and what I'm gonna do when I fire the game up is I'm gonna make a new route so uh, shush USB this is where it actually gets really really easy so once you've done this step which once you're the hang of it is dead easy um, once you've done this step to put the height map files in the right place um, what happens now is you basically just press a couple of buttons and the, the landscape magi magi magically appears um, it's uh, it's particularly uh, it's particularly cool uh, and very useful um, so I'm gonna go ahead and um, let me go in the menu um, 
that's all clean. Right, I can show this menu because there's nothing on there that you shouldn't see. <laughs> Hopefully. Uh, right, now let me just switch off my mug. Um, actually, if I share desktop, it's a bit bigger, isn't it? Yeah, we'll do that. Okay. So, um, SR, so the fold, someone just, Aram, Aram, Aram just asked, what's the fold name? So it's DEM, which stands for Digital Elevation Model, SRTM, which stands for Shuttle Radar Topology Mission. Um, so in here, we're going to click New Route. Now, when you click a new route, you're going to need to pick a ground texture set. Now, since I'm going to be, I'm looking actually at doing the North Norfolk Railway, um, I'm actually not going to build the North Norfolk Railway because I'm rubbish at actually building routes, but for the purpose of this example, uh, it's North Norfolk Railway, and we're looking for the West Somerset, right, West Somerset. Right, so that set of latitude and longitude, which is the one from where the um, um, from the West Somerset Railway. I want my own latitude and longitude. Now, what I've done is I've used Google Earth to get that information. So, one of the other little things that um, you may or may not be aware of is that Google Earth has a standard version and a professional version. You used to have to pay for the professional version. It is now free. So if you go to this URL, which I'm going to bring up now, hold on a second. So if you go to this URL, uh, google.co.uk slash earth slash download slash gep slash agree.html, let me just paste that onto the chat. Um, then you tick a couple of boxes here, you agree and download, and that will download you a copy of Google Earth Pro. When you first load it up, it's going to ask you to enter credentials. It's going to ask you to enter your the username and the license key that you have purchased. Well, oh, you don't have to purchase it, because what they've done, as of January this year, they've made it totally free. Uh, and what you do is you put your email address in, so your normal email address, and then for the license key, let me just remind myself what it is. The license key is GEP free, as in Google Earth Pro, GEP free, F R E E. So if you type that in as the license key, it will activate. And that will give you a spangling copy of Google Earth Pro. So here we are in, um, um, in, in, in Norfolk um, at Sheringham. There it is, there's Upper Sharing and there's Sharing. Right, so what's the benefits of um, Google Earth Pro? Google Earth Pro's got high res data and a bunch of other uh, functions that you can access and so forth, but fundamentally it's very similar. Um, so, having got that, what we now want to do is find the latitude and longitude. Now, by default, it's in the wrong format. You'll see they're down here at the bottom. I'm assuming you can see that down here at the bottom. Uh, and they're actually by default in the wrong format. What you need to do is change the format. And you go into Tools, Options, and then you see this Show Lat Long? You need to make sure that says Decimal Degrees. So if you do that, then down here you just get a 52 point, blah, 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 or, and so forth. Um, that's actually a number. French styling, is this necessary for proper route building? Um, well, what you want to get is a latitude and longitude. If you can get the latitude and longitude somewhere else, then you can do that. I've just always found this um, the, the best way of doing it. Uh, you can also you know, see some of the elevation model that you're going to be producing in the game. It's, it's just really, really useful. Um, so, on that note, let's pick somewhere. And we're going to grab the latitude and longitude. So at the bottom there, you can see it says 52.941851. And the longitude of 1.204506. Now I'm going to use something similar to that. I'm not actually going to use those. Because I wrote down some numbers earlier on, which are almost in exactly the same place. But, you know, three bricks further along. Um, so... Um, once we've got the, um, the latitude and longitude... Uh, we can then go into the game and we can type those in. So, 52.941805 is our latitude. And our longitude is 1.207367. So that's almost what we said a minute ago. And then for the name, I'm going to just put AAA uh, NNR. Just so it appears at the top of the list. And we click Create. There is the root. And we click Edit. 
Uh, so someone's, uh, I think, are you asking whether or not you need um, the, uh, if you want to, if you, every route needs a latitude and longitude origin. Uh, if it's a fictional route, then it doesn't matter what you put. You can leave it at whatever it says. If you want to put it in the right place so you can use Google Overlay, then you need to find out the correct one. Um, right. So we're now we're now here. We're at roughly the right place. Nine four one seven. That's basically it. And one one. That's it. Good. Make sure that these are set correctly and therefore look okay. Now we go into the top here enter the uh, painting tools and we click this button here which says import so it's the third one third row down second one in we click import so check the source folder dem srtm is correct let's pick an, a, a an area of five tiles by five tiles so that tells you how big the area is that you want to import these are srtm files and we click import now we've just appeared disappeared underground that's because the terrain has moved up now look at that we've got terrain and that's it folks that's all there is to importing terrain now that all that's done is imported a small section if we head north from here you can actually see where it dips down for the sea yeah you can see where the uh, the coast is where the beach is here um and if we head to the uh, to the west over here you can see where that we asked it to import an ar an, um, a for like a 5x5 five five, and that was the end of that section when you want to do your next section <coughs> you just simply import and click import again there we go. that's another load of data imported and that's your, that's your terrain done um, which means you haven't got to do it yourself it's, it looks correct without any extra work I mean if you're doing something mountainous then it can be quite dramatic landscapes um, and uh, you haven't really got to do any work so um, the neat thing is that Google Maps Overlay will also um, automatically mer meld uh, um, map to whatever you've got in the way of terrain as well. Um, so, so that's the terrain. Um, that's the first one done. So we have a win. First tutorial complete. Uh, that is how to import terrain data. So let's just have a quick recap. Get your dem data, so HGT files. Um, from somewhere like viewfinder panoramas uh, you may find sources that have got higher detailed data that data may have more errors in it I, I know the viewfinder panoramas do a lot of work to clean the data so it's a good place to start and you can always you can always re-import it again later on if you want to um, create the demo srtm folder and put the hgt files straight into that folder get yourself a copy of Google Earth Pro because it's just massively useful for absolutely every aspect of route building uh, remember that the key is GEP free I shall put that in the, the uh, comment uh, for the video when it goes up on YouTube uh, that's Golf Echo Papa free F-R-E-E -E. and then make sure you set Google Earth Pro to show the latitude and longitude as decimal degrees get the latitude and longitude you want to use for the origin of your route by just hovering over it and reading the values off the bottom um, then create a new route. Select the ground texture set first. If you type the latitude and longitude in and then select a ground texture set, it will overwrite what you've typed with the latitude and longitude built into that ground texture set. Um, and then once you're in the route, you just click import and tell it to bring just to just say bring data in, and it brings data in and does all the terraforming for you. Uh, Cameron's gaming. Is this what DTG use in routes? I believe so, but I'm not part of the root creation process, so I don't know for sure. Um, fringe style is Google. So Google Earth Pro is free and just needs a small license key. Yes, uh, it used to be commercial. Used to be three or four hundred dollars a year, um, but they've opened it up to be completely free. You just instead of typing a key that you would have been given having you had having bought it, you now just type in this one code G E P free, um, and that will. Um, give you the uh, the license that will activate it and then you can use it I've literally just used it um, so uh, I you can uh, you can do that on here as well um, sorry I've literally just used that code to activate Google Earth on here so I know it works I just did it about an hour ago <laughs> um, and if you search for Google Earth Pro free you'll actually find articles talking about it becoming free and so forth so it's uh, um, it's it's quite easy right so the next thing then is um, how do we get um, thingy um, 
Google Earth, uh, Google Maps to work. 